That's why so, I want a, bull, a bear market, though, because look at how much money you can make when it corrects know. back. You know, you just make a ton. Exactly. Yeah. Using, I mean, maybe, yeah, you can talk about that. Like, that's why we're excited because even if you just sat in cash entire bear market, the from January 2019 to what May shows you what it looks like after a bear market. The market yeah. takes off. So you can make so much money so quick if you're yeah. poised and ready. Yep. So. All right. Well, with that, um, you want to go first or do you want me to go? Sure. Okay. No, you go first. I always go first. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll follow yeah. up the, the end and then. Yeah. Uh, okay. No problem. Hey, well, everyone, welcome uh, to another one of our weekly recaps. This is Trader Travis, my partner and prophet, Peter. Uh, we're going to talk about our thoughts on the market, you know, kind of what we're doing with our personal portfolios. We're average investors showing you how average people can often beat the market. And if we can't beat the market, how average people can still manage to eke out a decent return in the market without blowing out your account. You know, despite what the experts say, oh, it's risky, you'll fail. 90% of you know traders fail. We're showing you every week that, no, that's in our experience, that's not true. That's a lie. You know, if you're following a proven blueprint, you'll be okay. Of course, everything we're sharing is for educational and informational purposes only. Um, you know, and besides for that, we believe in individual empowerment. We want to educate you. Unlike the experts, we actually want to educate you with the information so you can make your own decisions. So that way you're not dependent on a quote unquote expert to tell you what to do. You will know what to do yourself. For example, based on my knowledge, I don't need an expert to tell me that, hey, the market is volatile right now. Cash is a position. If I can't find any decent signals in the market, maybe I should just take a break. But I also know that this is a great uh, market, at least in my opinion, to do something called like renting out my stock shares. It's also called covered calls, right? I can buy my stock shares. I can rent them out to other people. Say, hey, you know, you can take these shares from me. You know, you can buy these shares from me. And in exchange for that, they give me a premium. They give me rent, right? So while the market is sitting tight and I have some extra cash, I could honestly buy some shares of an ETF or a stock. And while I'm waiting for the market to figure out what it's going to do, I can just go ahead and sell those uh, cover calls because it's guaranteed income. I don't have to give it back. And so that's a strategy I'm looking to do now until the market sorts itself out. I'm just going to churn over my account, churn over my shares, constantly buy them, constantly sell them. And then wait for the market to tell me which direction it wants to go. So that's some of the things I'm looking at. Um, before, actually, I won't even, maybe we'll, Peter, you can cover the market? Sure. Okay, Peter, we'll pull up charts and stuff and Peter covers the market. So I'm just kind of going to wax on here a little bit. I'm just going to look at my notes. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, I try to have something interesting to say. <laughs> uh, each recap did not be so technical and boring. Um, I don't have anything interesting today. I have a lot of personal drama I'm dealing with. Um, but I guess I could talk about that, not in detail, but just say that sometimes um, it can look like a person's life is perfect. You're like, oh yeah, whoopie do. They're making all this money every month in the market. And you think our lives are perfect and we have everything all together and like we don't have any drama, you know. But behind the scenes, we have family members getting cancer, having strokes. We're dealing with all kinds of other dynamics in the family, you know, but we still show up and, you know, we still demonstrate that it's possible to succeed and deal with life. You know, because life can be disappointing, it can be unexpected, it can punch you in the gut sometimes. You're like, I just, it's just too much right now, right? But we have to commit to showing up despite what's going on, you know, in your personal life. Is it easy? Ah, uh, heck no. <laughs> Before we hit record, I was like, I'm so pissed off right now. I was like, I can't even think straight. I was like, but let's roll with it, Peter. Let's just go, right? Because I'm saying I'm not going to allow the drama, I'm not going to allow the frustrations to derail me. I know I have to stay focused and stay committed. Now, with that being said, there are a lot of people who allow life to make them bitter. I get a lot of hate mail being the person I am. Um, whenever you're trying to, you know, and I knew this going in, my millionaire mentor taught me this. Whenever you try to do something great in the world, you really try to help people, you're going to get attacked. And it's so backwards. You're like, why should people trying to do something good in the world be attacked? But it's more reflection of them than it is me. They have their own personal issues. And I found it amusing that I get so much hate email from people and hate comments. And I'm like, people 
must like suffering. Like, and I'm like, why don't you exercise your power and personal choice and just unsubscribe to my emails? But they don't. They will literally stick around in a year and every email I send out, they say something mean back or hateful. Oh, you just want to get rich off people. But I'm like, why don't you just unsubscribe? Like they just, I don't know if they just lack intelligence or they just like suffering. And so I'm like, it's just always amusing. You all have the personal power choice, right? You have the personal power choice to listen to Peter and I, to do what we ask. That's your power of choice. To If your life sucks, do something about it, right? Sending me hate mail won't help you. You know, also, if you just absolutely cannot stand Peter and I, exercise your power of choice in exit stage left, right? Go find someone else you listen to. And I mean, it's that's why it's amusing because the society or your family, I don't know, has never taught you that you're in control, right? You may not, it may not be your fault that your life sucks right now, but it is dang, sure, is dang your responsibility to do something about it, right? To make your life better. Sending me hate me email doesn't help you. So whether you have emotional issues, you know, don't sign up for our courses. I would honestly say take that money and hire a psychiatrist. That's a better return on investment to work through your emotional issues. And if you like us and I'm just, you know, wasting your time talking about the haters, same thing. Like you like us, but just don't listen to us, you know, exercise your power of choice and do something to better your life each week. That's why we have these recaps to motivate you to say, hey, we do something every single week. We are committed. Did, did that I'm rambling, Peter, but no, yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting how I think the, the number one reason why people do it, I mean, it's just my opinion, but, um, because we're surrounded by nothing but negativity, you can turn on the TV and even programs that are not real, you know, they're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're fictional programs. Are they positive fictional programs or mm -hmm. negative fictional programs? They're negative. You turn on the news, it's all negative. You know, mm -hmm. everything you look at is negative. So we're brought up into this world of negativity. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you brought up a point, you said 90% of the people, um, you know, they say 90% of investors fail. That actually may be true because 90% of the investors <laughs> aren't willing to do what the other 10% are willing to do. Yeah. You know, 90% of investors or people that think they're investors aren't willing to take a loss in, in an effort to stave off a huge loss. Mm -hmm. Right. They're not willing to sell out of a position because of whatever reason, their ego. No, no, no. The stock's going to go up when the signs are clearly telling you the stock is going down. Um, so that's, I think, a lot to do with it. But um, but maybe people do send you those hate, hate emails and maybe that's how they vent. I don't know. It's not a good way because, you know, something a friend of mine taught me a long time ago was um, – you are always in an interview. Don't ever mm. forget that. And what he meant by that is you never know who you're talking to today. And if you <laughs> rub them the wrong way, they might be your potential future boss in the future. Right? Uh. <laughs> it's not a weird saying, potential future boss in the future. So they could be your potential boss in the future. You could be relying on them to hire you or to help you in the future. And they may be very good at long-term memory and remember <laughs> six months ago. So uh, uh, I think they're all good points there. And <laughs> I, I, hopefully it'll make a difference in someone. Oh, the, the, the reality though, Travis, out of a hundred people that watch it, it might make a difference in two or four of them because that's hey. just the way the numbers work. Right. Yeah. And hey, we only need one person to change the world. So it's that's true. why we're here. We're here. We're, I'm not, I'm definitely not here for the haters. Honestly, because of Peter, I'm good. I don't even respond to him anymore. I just laugh and ignore it and move on. But for everybody else watching, I'm just, hey, you know, this is how we deal with it. I pretty much ignore the naysayers, move on. I, I focus more on you all. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm ticked off, but let's roll. Let's record this recap. Let's be here for the people who really enjoy hearing what we have to say. Oh, one last thing before I show you the chart, because um, I want to talk about the market, is you said it may be true 90% of people fail. And here's the beauty of that. The losers in life, and hey, I used to be a loser. So trust me, I'm not putting down losers. I was bona fide loser, skeptic, Mr. Victim. That's just the way I was raised. But I met a millionaire who's like, hmm, 
And this is the beauty of how millionaires think. Okay, 90% of traders fail. The losers will focus on the 90% of traders fail. Yeah. They will stop there. That millionaire was like, well, Travis, you know, what that tells you is that 10% is succeeding. And if 10% is yeah. succeeding, you have all the proof you need that it works. It's your job to find that 10%, model their thoughts and behaviors, and then you will be part of the 10%. Without hearing that, I would have never thought that way. I would have been like, wow, the, the odds are stocked and I'll fail. You know, it's 90%. I might as well not even give it up. But I'm like, wow, that's brilliant how he flipped that. Like, that's the difference between winners and losers. It's just based on how they think. That's why I was like, it's not about strategies. It's 80, 90% of based on how you think. Yep. Now, with that, let's go ahead and look at the market. It was something I was saying when I was ranting on, I was thinking about the market, um, that the market right now um, – is in a predictable pattern um, where we can see here, I have these blue lines drawn. Let me make sure you all can see that. Yeah. Yep. All right. So you have these blue lines drawn, which are called support and resistance. They're just price levels where you kind of see where the stock is kind of staying within. And so we can see prices, at least for the last few months, have been going up to uh, resistance, not going through it and falling back down to support. And just predictably, just a few days ago, it hit resistance. And what is it doing? Going back down. Problem is, though, I don't know if it will go back down to support. Peter and I were just talking how we, at least for me, I was finger refreshing my screen. I have Market Club. I'm following Market Club templates here. Let's see if I have Market Club pulled up here so I show what this looks like. So Market Club is a software I use. It kind of gives me entry next to signals. They call them trade triangles. So I was looking for something called a weekly trade triangle. It's a midterm entry or exit signal so based on what the market was doing lately i'm like a, a weekly red a weekly exit signal has to trigger soon based on the movement the market is doing so i was just waiting for it waiting for it and trust me i was incredibly tempted to like buy put options exit my positions early like it took everything within my personal power to not it wasn't a freak out. It was just like, well, let me try to jump ahead. The market's going to fall. Let me buy some puts or let me, I'm tired of watching my profitable trades turn into losers. I was ticked off. I'm like, seriously, I was almost at max profit on this trade. Now it's at a loss. I should have exited, you know, should have, could have, would have. But I'm like, you know, let me stick to my discipline. Let me wait for a signal because I promise you, here's what's going to happen. I probably will exit and then something will happen in a way house and they'll say something positive. <laughs> They're playing with our, our emotions right now, right? They say one thing, the market crashes. They say another thing, it goes up. I'm like, stop manipulating the market, right? So as soon as I exit, you know, something's going to come out of the White House and then the market's going to take off and I'm going to be mad that I got out my position. So I was like, you know what? Let me just follow my exit signal. Once I close out my trades, I'm just going to go ahead and stick to renting out stocks for a little bit because that's guaranteed income, right? I can't... Well, at least the way I treat it, I don't lose. I don't ever give back that money, right? So that's what I'm going to do to bring in some income while I wait out the market. And then when the market finally picks a direction, whether it's up or down, and it stops trading in this channel I just showed you a few minutes ago, once it comes out of that channel, that's when I'm going to start picking up other strategies, like buy more calls or buying more puts, maybe venturing back into the cash flow trades, which IE are called credit spreads. So that's my thoughts there. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Peter. I have took enough of your precious time today. So basically, I'm not doing much, honestly. I haven't placed many trades since I came back from vacation. Um, I'm just sitting, sitting tight, um, accumulating cash, waiting for the market to pick a direction. Yeah, so I thought I was going to cover the market, but I guess you are. <laughs> no, you have additional thoughts, buddy. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we did uh, agree to that, huh? See, that's what happens when I rant. I get so worked up, man. I just... Can't roll with it <laughs> i don't really so you can you can see my screen right yeah i can <laughs> I SPY up. so i'm in an spy trade same thing i mean i was kind of we don't use hope but i was kind of hoping maybe this time it would break through um resistance but it didn't so <laughs> uh so we were talking about it though we use the market club template and i'm just waiting for that weekly red to hit um maybe tomorrow um mm -hmm. that's when i'll exit my trades but i was in the same boat my trades were profitable and then now they're not profitable and um it is what it is this is the nature of trading especially in october i talked about this last recap and i talked about how i wasn't 
going to do much after this because October is notoriously, if we see a, a bear market, this is typically when we tend to see them. Um, I have thoughts on what I think the market will do, but it doesn't matter um, because as we always say, the market doesn't care what I think. It, you just do what the market's telling you. And right now the market's telling me it doesn't know what it wants to do. Sorry, I switched screens. <laughs> uh, I, I switched it over because I realized um, I was looking the wrong way. So, okay, now you can see it, right? Sorry yeah. about that. One of those <laughs> fancy gurus with six to 10 screens, Peter. I only have two screens. <laughs> Just because of, I don't really need it for all my trading stuff. I need it for when I do my other work. Uh, yeah. I need to use it. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's that's yeah, that's my SPY. I'm also in a Walmart trade. I thought I had Walmart pulled up here, um, and I don't. Here yeah, Walmart did good today. I it I was I was tempted to buy some more Walmart or get into a trade <laughs> on Walmart. And I'm like, hey, Walmart's doing okay today. <laughs> yeah, because this one's been kind of flirting with. This doesn't have much more time left on it, um, and it's it's kind of been flirting with the, you know, I'm barely up, barely down, and today it's finally up into a decent profit range, and I I still have a ways to go to see it at my 80 percent, but. Um, Time is kind of winding down, so if it gets a little squirrely with the with kind of meandering around the 118, 120 mark, then I'll I'll have to exit this trade because I'm going to come close to time, and in the money will definitely start hurting the profit on it. So yeah, um, that's really it. The only other thing uh, I had a covered call. Travis talked about renting out shares and the way we do it. Um, the way I did my recent covered calls on AT&T because AT&T really took off, um, I sold covered calls well above my cost basis. Well, um, I sell them in blocks of five based on how many shares I own. So 500 shares got assigned um, and they got called away. The good news with all of that was I think the original revenue from the covered call, because it was a short term covered call, I think it was only like 30 or 35 days. I think the original revenue was like 220 to 240. And then by getting exercised, I made an additional $1,500. So that works out kind of nice. Um, and not sure because AT&T is at a zone. We talk about AT&T. It's at a really high price point right now. And AT&T doesn't move a lot if you follow AT&T. It doesn't do really big moves like a Coca-Cola or an Apple or even a Walmart. Um, so I'll just sit tight with the rest of the shares I own. Um, sell covered calls if it starts going down. The way it's going right now, I'm not going to sell any covered calls um, because I don't want to I haven't made the decision to get rid of any more shares. So um, so that's it. That's pretty much where I'm sitting. After I get out of my SPY trades, which I imagine will probably be this week, um, I just really don't foresee SPY doing anything spectacular, but you never know. But once I get an exit signal, get out of SPY, um, and then Walmart will be my last trade I'm in. Uh, and then I will just kind of sit tight like I talked about because October just doesn't seem to fare too well. And you can see the market doesn't really know what it wants to do. So um, for some people, they do use those trading ranges you showed, Travis, to trade uh, cash flow strategies. Um, oh, for sure. And I, I've used them before in the past too, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to just take the profits I made this year and just sit tight. And January tends to be, we'll either have, we were talking about this, we'll either have a January like 2016 where Travis and I both <laughs> lost 10% of our account in one month. Um, mm -hmm. But I wanted to kind of cover that as my last point. Um, you know, back in, if any of you guys were in, for those of you that we didn't do YouTube videos, but if no, you're in no. the Success Academy, back in 2016, Travis and I both, January is usually a really good trading month. Um, so we traded what we saw the market was telling us and it, <laughs> the market tricked us and it actually dropped quite a bit in January. And so we lost 10% because that was our max loss, right? That's mm -hmm. how we manage our trades. And we, we hit our max loss for the month of January. Um, it was very difficult. I was fortunate to be a member of the Success Academy and have someone like Travis to say, hey, it's only 10%, easy 11.4% 
gets you back to break even, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we did end up ending the year uh, on a very high note, you know, a pretty high note, not as high as what you're seeing this year, but we ended the year on a high note. So it just goes to show you if you use risk management, um, you can do well. The other thing it goes to show you, and most people don't focus on this, they only focus on the bad news, right? It just goes to show you when the market does what it's doing now, it's presenting you with huge opportunities. If you go back to uh, 2018 was not a good year for the market, but look at what 2019 did for the market mm. and what you, if you took advantage of those, that huge crash, you, you know, what you could have done with the market if you know what we do if you know if you have that skill set so um so don't get if you're down a little bit don't um the market will always return to its uh <laughs> previous values it always has even if it takes six to eight months it will um and just have patience because it will present itself with opportunities and i just know that january is going to present us with either the opportunities of a bear market and i know people are probably like why is that an opportunity this is why you need to increase your financial education when it comes to trading mm -hmm. um because it will either either give us that travis or it's going to give us an a, what it did this past crash where it, it just kind of rebounded pretty good and, and it goes up so we'll see. Um, as of right now, I'm just going to sit tight. All right. Same here. Pretty much summary is we're not doing much. <laughs> we're waiting. <laughs> Wait and see. And yeah. that is a position. Cast is a position. Yeah. Waiting and seeing is not a bad thing. Emotionally, it's traumatizing because you feel like, oh, I need to hurry up and make some money. No. What you need to do is hurry up and develop more patience. You know, that is how people get wealthy. They are incredibly patient. Uh, with that, I think we're done. Oh, I will say this. I'll give you a hard time, Peter. I miss your Excel spreadsheets, man. So can't wait to get those <laughs> updated and you start sharing I, your spreadsheets again. I'm sorry. I, you've I've been do doing a lot. My spreadsheet, you, I just never show it. I'm, yeah. You've been I doing a lot. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. All right. So our next recap, I'll show you my spreadsheet. <laughs> you know. You know, I know how it is, you know, moving into that new McMansion of yours. You know, it's just so busy now. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Because I'm is, jealous, man. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a lot in, in the months of, you know, my my spreadsheet. When you see it, you're going to be like, oh, that's not that great. It, the, the best part is I haven't lost any money. Exactly. In months, so that's a good thing. So. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it we have for you all. Hey, until then, we see you next week. And I will remember this time, Peter, if this video is posted on YouTube or anywhere else, hey, if you have an option, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like button, all of the above. Um, we enjoy doing these. Uh, we may, moving forward, have an uh, admin note on how we will structure these moving forward in 2020. Um, but until then, hey, enjoy it while you can. Consider this. We're devoting our time here. We're volunteering our time to assist and help you out and inspire you each week. So it's an honor, pretty much. We appreciate you. Without you watching these videos, we wouldn't have a reason to record them. So thank you. I do not take that lightly. So until next week, hey, you take care. See you then. Bye-bye.